Hello and welcome. This is part three of this Nuxt 3 tutorials where we are building, we're learning how to uh, connect Prisma to Nuxt 3. So in the last video, we connect, in, in the first one, we connected our our Prisma, um, our database to Nuxt 3. And then in the next, in the last video, we added an API because we feel it's safer to query your database from your uh, back end server, um, f from your server than from your front end. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do now is actually connect to our database. So to learn to, to do that, let's first see what Prisma says about how to say create a user, right? So let's go to Prisma, let's look at the docs here. In the documentation, uh, let me see, uh, blah, 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 blah. Sometimes I like to say Prisma CRUD, just like that. Google will help you find things a lot faster like that. <laughs> okay, here we are, see, like that. So the first thing we wanna do is we want to create, right? So it says, okay, const user, await Prisma.user, uh, create. Okay, so, Let's go and do that. So we're gonna copy this code. And we're going to go to our, the correct app here. And this is the, uh, the post, which will be create. And uh, let's see, we're gonna run the code right here. <laughs> okay. So user await Prisma to create, so we don't know what Prisma is. So how do we get the Prisma object? I'm gonna go to some code that I've already written here. Uh, okay, so what we need to do is first import Prisma client like that. Of course, you, you don't have this code, but you don't need to worry about that. And we're gonna import that right above here. I'm gonna import Prisma client, and then we're going. We have to instantiate that Prisma client, which I believe is done. Uh, where is that? Right there. Copy that. I'm gonna instantiate it. I suppose. Uh, I think we do it in well, right here. All right, and then this is saying await needs to be in an async. We're gonna say that's an async event. All right, and uh, our table is called users. With TypeScript, sometimes it gets a little bit funky. and Sometimes you need to restart. If uh, you change something in your database and TypeScript is saying, hey, look, it looks different. What you need to go is to, you can go to um, the command palette here and then type, restart the TypeScript server. That's can uh, restart TypeScript and then it will show that uh, whenever something you change something in your database, it's gonna be reflected in TypeScript. All right, so it's saying what, so th what, what it's saying here is that the email, look at the error, the email does not exist. It's not um, a column in your table, which makes sense, right? Because when we look, at our schema here, we have ID and we have name. ID, we, we don't change that. That's automatically done by the database. It's how we have unique IDs for each record in the database. So all we need is name. Data, they created and updated that uh, also um, automatically done uh, in the database. And I think I should, instead of doing saying updated, I should say created at. So this makes better sense. Let's do that actually. I'm gonna call this created ad. We, we don't have any records in the database, so this shouldn't change anything. I mean like, uh, you know, mess with any data. So we're gonna run a migration here. We're going to say npx uh, prisma migrate dev.
the name of migration is uh, we just we changed um, change create what was it again <laughs> change uh, what was it before date created okay change date created to up to create it at enter all right so that's good so all we have to change is the name i mean all we have to deal with with our table is the name okay so let's go back to our post i'm just going to get rid of email because in our users table we, we don't have that this is a simple table that we're creating here okay so what this means is that we're gonna have a user and we're gonna create the name of the user here. Um, however, we are dealing with an API. So we're gonna get data from the front end and send it to the API. And then we're gonna extract that data and then put it into the database as a name. So the way we do that with Nux3 is we're gonna say const um, body equals uh i'm forgetting some of the code here because uh use body no it's read body uh await read body event all right so in the event object there is a body object that is whenever you add something to the body in your HTTP requests. I hope this is not too complex. All right, and then uh, what we're gonna say here is if body.name, then we're just going to, hmm, let me say something here. Okay, I'm gonna say const user, is null and then we're going to remove that cost there uh, and this is what coming oh i'm going to say let let user okay so all we're saying is here we're gonna we expect to read uh a name from the body and if that name exists we're going to add it to the um Gonna say body dot name here. We're gonna add it to the database. Not, not like that. Like this. Body dot name. Okay, and then um, whenever we add it, we're going to return it here. We're just going to say uh, user is. Hope this does work. So we're gonna return this object of the user that we just added to the database. All right, so how about we, we try this? So now this means that we are going to have to create something in the front end and send it to the back. End. But however, we can actually test that using Postman before we create something in the front end. So let's, let's try that. Let's go to Postman and we are going to send a post request to users and in the body right here right in the body we are going to have uh we're gonna edit this oh wait a minute oh this is the re response <laughs> it's right here i'm gonna just uh yeah so in the body we are going to send name and this name can be whatever you want it. It's gonna be my name, right? Jeremy Wangela. Okay. So we're sending a post request to users. And uh, let's see what happens. If everything works well, then we're going to get back a response of the same user object that we just we just added. Actually, hold up. Let me see here. 
instead of doing it like this, how about we actually get the whole record from Prisma, right? I'm gonna say then, and I believe Prisma sends you the response. Um, I'm just gonna say this response. And then what this response would be, it'd actually be the user object. We're gonna say this, rather than saying this is the user, uh, let me see, we're gonna get, maybe I'm doing the same thing here, huh? Uh, and I believe there's error if we get an, uh, well, let's try that. I think I, I, think I just did the same thing. <laughs> Let's see what we get here. Send that, we might have to restart the server. Oh, excellent. So that worked. So we sent a post request to the database and then we got back the actual database record. It says the ID one, name is Jeremy Mangawa, blah, 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 blah. Let's take a look at the database. You go to the database and we refresh, we're going to see the record. And there it is. And that's how easy it is to do that. So, but what if there's nothing in here? What happens if there's nothing in here? User is null. So I don't think we add that to the database at all because we'd have gotten an error. See if we refresh that. So that, that didn't work. So our little code here detected that there is nothing in the in, bo, in body dot name the name, and so we are not going to create a record in the database. So we can add any kinds of names now here, right? Let's say uh, Alan Mana. See, there's a record ID number two, and we can say. I don't know, shin mob, whatever that means. <laughs> okay, so there you have it, right? Dorothy Day. And that's how easy it is to do that. Now, of course, we have to add some code in the front end so we can mimic it, but hey, at least this is working. All right, so in the next video, God willing, we're gonna see how we can actually read the data that we just um, created here and then we see how we can edit it and then delete it and then after that we're going to create the front end code that can um, so you can actually do things from the front front end alrighty I hope you like this video hey if you want a, um, a free Nox 3 Tailwind starter kit that looks like this comes with pages layout uh, plugins, components, and TypeScript. This is yours absolutely free. Just click the link below and it's yours absolutely free. It's supposed to help you get started becoming a wonderful Nox 3 developer. Hope you like this video. Give it a th thumbs up. Click the link below. Get yourself your free towing starter kit and I'll see you soon.